see what to expect from the markets, maybe from the MPC, as we have joining us in the studio, uh, Patrick Ejemudia. He's the research analyst with Sterling Assets Management. Hi, Patrick. Good morning. Hi, good morning, Nini. So we're here talking, and the MPC CB of the CBN are there. So what do you think they're discussing at this time? Of course, nothing Inflation like that. Inflation at 29.9%. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to see what they can put together to bring the level, the level of inflation down. Yeah, but I mean, sometimes I just wonder. Mm. We know that the, the current CBN governor has said that uh, there's inflation targeting. That's what we're working with. Yeah. But sometimes I just think, isn't that putting the CBN in a tight corner? Because a lot of the factors driving inflation in Nigeria is beyond the monetary policy makers. Yeah. It's in the fiscal. We yeah. talk of insecurity, yeah. supply chain yeah. disruptions, and yeah. all of that. So, is yeah, the CBN... Yeah. Yeah, these are two issues. There's one on the fiscal aspect on the one hand, and there's the monetary aspect on the other hand. Now, if you look at from the monetary aspect, you see that money supply has also grown. If you check the growth of money supply from December to, from December to January, you will see that that value has gone up. And it now becomes paramount for the CBN as a tool to see what they can do to control the amount of money in circulation. Mm, but that reminds me of an interview that we had with uh, the Minister of Finance last week. And he said the reason why we have um, excess money in supply is because in the past eight years, uh, there was money being pumped into the economy without corresponding productivity. But I mean, this latest money in supply is just within this year. So it's not about eight years ago. So that means there's still something that is being done wrong. Yeah. And so, so two ways. We've mentioned one. The pro major problem is what we've talked about earlier, the problem of food insecurity. But again, now that the CBN has come, if you plot the trend of money supply, you will see that, yes, in the past eight years, money supply has been growing as well. But the value that it has grown has shown this upward trend, particularly from June, when we had the unification of the exchange rate. And the essence is because government needs to now pump money to take care of this exchange rate depreciation that we are having. So that value has gone up. And if that value has gone up, the CBN, the monetary authority, will have no other option than to say, OK, how do we control the amount of money that is in circulation? Mm, so we uh, see them very busy at, uh, at the fixed income market auctions every week. And you know, I think the yields are looking good. So it, it's attracting a lot of investors. Is that working so far or is it too early to say? Yeah, it's too early for now because we begin to see the results, particularly if you look at the market now, by the equity market, you see that people are moving because they are coming to take advantage in the fixed income space. And what that happens is that these monies will be more part of the system. And if they mop it out of the system, then it, what we begin to see, maybe sometimes in March, maybe not too soon, maybe in the very long run, we begin to see this since we need some positive results. When you say March, I just laugh. I laugh, Patrick, because <laughs> even the United States that thought they would start rate cuts, they're still postponing till about two months. I wonder when we, we have inflation at 29, we have uh, uh, food inflation at over 30. Mm. You know, I, I wonder when we'll ever talk about cutting rates. No, <laughs> for now, we might not be talking about cutting rate because the rate is very high at the moment. 29.9 is very high. So before we'll be talking about cutting rate is to bring it down. In the United States, they are talking about bringing that to about 2%. And they are currently above that, just about, I don't know, but they are currently above that. But in Nigeria, we are very high. So we cannot be talking about cutting rate now. But we hope that if we get it right now, the rates will start coming down. Then the next future will be then. Be so, do about you about think in the rate. past we have had conversation about we see the MPC increasing rate, we don't see a corresponding impact in the economy? Do you think that it will be different now? Yeah, the one major reason why it's always like that because you see the MPC increasing the rate, and at the same time the fiscal authorities are increasing the expenditure, so it doesn't go together. So, for it to work, most the two authorities must pursue the same goal. And that's the reason why you see those things don't go together. If monetary policy is increasing the rate, uh, inflation is also going up. And you'll be wondering why. The reason is probably sometimes attributed to the fact that the fiscal authorities, are at that time that the monetary policy is increasing the rate, they are increasing expenditure. So maybe because then we didn't have a coordinating minister of the economy. Now we have one. And in that our conversation with him, with Channel TV, he did promise that there will be closer collaboration between you know, the, the monetary fiscal policy and the monetary. Yeah. So do you think or do you see um, conscious efforts by the fiscal side to cut expenditure so that they will reduce the money going into the economy? Uh, for now, we, we, Nigeria can't be talking about cutting expenditure now because if ah. you know... So it's a contradiction. <laughs> yeah, so where yeah, do we go from yeah. here? <laughs> so the issue is basically is that you keep hearing about the food insecurity problem and government is trying to see what they can do to boost the agricultural sector and all that. But at the same time, there are still some level of control. You cannot just leave it and say because you want to keep pumping money into circulation, both authorities should be pumping money and all that. What you will see at that level will be high level of inflation that well, we may not be able to control or be talking about at, you know, at that time. Well, the good thing is we've heard about ways and means. Uh, how much does that contribute? Now we've seen this administration saying they're going to cut down 
or maybe reduce or stop ways and means. I'm not sure of which one, which stand they want to take now. But how much does ways and means contribute to the to the challenge that we have now? Of course, these are form of money supplied to the system. And so, because by the time the CBN gives this to the government, it pumps into the economy. And that will, of course, increase my supply and causes inflation. And of course, that can also be the reason why some of this, we're having some of these exchanges crisis that we're having. Because with more money, people have more money to demand for FX. So it has a role to play. So if the CBN or the Monetary Authority is saying they want to control it, then it's a good one. But the, the major issue is that drive to be able to keep to it, to make it stable, and so that it doesn't now come out of hand after a few weeks or a few mm, months. Not when uh, there's a need. Then we mm. see them going back there. Exactly. But how does all of this affect the market, uh, the equities market? We've seen the, uh, the NGX slow down in the, in the last, I think, last two weeks. We want to assume that the investors are going to the fixed income market because the yields are looking attractive. Mm. But what, how do you see all of this, uh, the decision of the MPC and all of that affecting investor sentiment? Yeah, if you, that tells you the level of risk appetite of Nigerians. Most people want a situation where they put their money in the place where they can get stable income. Even though the return in the equity market is high, but the risk is also very high. So because the rate at the fixed income is coming up now, you see a lot of people moving from that market, and that's why you see the market likely to go down, because those factors that drove the market up to the level that it is now, they're actually not there again. You know, before now, we see the strategic position of investors are trying to take position of, you know, because of the Q4 report and the full year report of company that was coming now, people are taking position, and all those other things, they are now out. So what's driving the market now going down is because of the rates that people, the rates in the fixing space that is going up. So people are moving towards that market. And like I said, because of the low risk appetite of Nigerians. Yeah, but the earnings, I don't think this earning, the earnings for NGX, I don't think it really made a lot of movement. Or, or did I miss it? The earnings and, and you know, the statements that came out, financial statements. Yeah, it didn't make so much move, movement. But again, what, because the factors that drove the market initially, sometimes we know that it has some factors to play. Those earnings have some factors to play. But if you take a very careful look at it, you will see that two main factors are what drove the market. You know, in January, you will see that the, the rate in the fixed income was low. And people move money from the fixed income market to the equity market. But well, in February, this rate started coming up. So people are taking money from that <laughs> to this place now because of, like I said, the risk appetite. Again, you also see that the major factor that, again, has made this market to go up, like I've always said, is because the exchange rate has also depreciated. And when this exchange rate depreciates, like I've said, you will see firms that have uh, asset, uh, foreign assets, you see their values going up. And when their values going up, the demand for their shares go up. And when the demand for their shares go up, their share price will go up. And that's why you see a lot of companies now, their share price quality, the banking sector, you see their share price coming up. And so that's one activity that's been driving the market up. And these activities are no more there anymore. So, and that's why the market is coming down. <laughs> All right. Uh, do you want to say how many basis points you think the MPC will raise rates? Tomorrow? Yeah, well, I've heard a lot of, uh, you know, issues there and there about people saying 300, 500. But I think uh, between... 50 basis and 150 basis points. Oh, you're yeah, not reason, even up to 200. No, I've no, had 200, 200 the most. Not up to 200. Because, you know, we have to look at what exactly do we want to pursue. You know, government at the moment now is also trying to grow the, you know, the, the like you pointed out in your, in, your, in your review, you will see that the industrial market, the industrial goods sector is down. Yeah. And why? Because the rate is already up for most of them to borrow. Mm. And when they are not borrowing, they are not investing, people are not buying their stock as well, so they will not be doing well in the market. And I'm sure that government wants to increase that, that sector to do well too. Mm. So they will not want to increase the rate beyond 50 basis points or 150 basis points. All view. right, we just have to wait about 24 hours and we know if that's correct or not. Thank you so much, Patrick Thank and Jim, so the research too. analyst, Sterling Asset Management. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. <laughs> All right, so that's it uh, on this side of uh, Sunrise Daily. Back to uh, the conversation, the current affairs side of Sunrise Daily with Maupe, um, um, Ayo, and Kayla. Kayla, I really have to get used to ha having you on the team, so don't forget me. <laughs> don't forgive me, but back to you guys for the rest of the program.